I was born in Newland, Georgia, Cuyahoga County. I spent my first four years of school uh, at a schoolhouse that was on my church ground, St. John Baptist Church School. There was no public school for blacks in my county. There was a public school for whites, no public school for blacks. They were taking my daddy's tax money. My daddy worked every day. When he worked, he got paid state t income taxes. He paid sales taxes when he bought things. Uh, he, paid, uh, he, paid, he paid all kind of taxes like everybody else. It's still hard to figure how we managed just to live our lives from day to day. Yeah. Your, your parents drilled into you these survival skills. You know, don't talk back to white people. Don't look them in the face. Don't, if, they, if they're coming down the sidewalk and you see them, just get off the sidewalk. Don't because you're not supposed to touch them physically. You can't ever physically rub them against them or anything like that. So, so they, and that was, this was their survival skill. It was the way they train you to keep you from getting, ended up like Emmett Till. So those same people were brutalizing our people who were, who were, who were denying them jobs and denying them educational opportunities. Uh, those people had to, had, to, had to change their tunes. It became really clear to us that if we wanted to change the South, we had to change uh, some of these places where blacks had, uh, uh, were being uh, brutalized uh, because they were trying to register to vote. Uh, I went to, when I went to college in 1959, the sit-in movement started in 1960. I was arrested for the first time in a sit-in movement in the city in there in Atlanta. At a, we went to a, 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 on a little demonstration there. I got put in jail and then later became chairman of the Atlanta student movement. And by then I was a professional and I was, I was uh, trying to juggle being a college student at Morehouse College with uh, being a civil rights leader. And you know, Dr. King was there when I, he, he wasn't there when I first got there, but then he came in 61 to Morehouse to, to, to become a teacher at the school. And, and he taught there. We got to see him, a lot of him, and, uh, and uh, you know, to admire him, really, for his work and his courage. I didn't know quite what to expect on the march. Well, first of all, kind of, it's kind of funny, because the march on Washington was not a march. Nobody ever, for most people, it wasn't a march. We marched, actually. SNCC formed a group up here at 14th and Park Road. We, we marched from there all the way down to the Capitol. And first of all, it, I mean, all the way down to the Lincoln Memorial. Uh, first of all, I remember it was further than I thought. It was hot as I don't know what. And it was downhill, but it was a lot further than I thought. I'm thinking it was a piece of cake, but it was about at least a mile and a half. And by the time we got there, we were all sweaty and stuff. But we were singing these freedom songs, and we were pumped up by the time we got there. But these people were assembling from everywhere. By the time we got there, you could see people coming from all different directions, and it was just a huge number of people. Uh, but we, we had deliberately tried to keep ourselves together as a group. So we, we were singing and, and marching. We marched right up to the front. Let me just say, as I walked into this crowd of what seemed to me like a million people. I know the press said it was only 250,000 or something. I don't know. Uh, maybe they weren't counting all these people I saw. It was the biggest crowd I had ever seen in my life. Uh, old people and young people, black and white, and, and people, you know, we always were well-dressed when we went out to these things. Signs everywhere. Uh, I, it, it, you know, I, I think I knew for the first time that there was enough support out here in this world uh, so that America really had to change some of this, that, that, that they couldn't continue to go on the way they were going. I think for the first time, we realized that uh, something good was happening here. And we took that march on Washington as a jump off point. And so we've been fortunate, really I have been fortunate too, to not only help bring on a revolution here in America, but to help make some basic changes and, and to be living at a time when there's an African-American president of the United States and, and the f three or 400 black mayors here in this country, the sheriffs in many of these counties where I was being chased around as a civil rights worker now, African-Americans, and, and the whole paradigm has changed. And I think that, uh, that not only did we change, but also we changed America in a direction that has made this country a better place for everybody. And I think his election is a demonstration of that as much as anything else, that America has changed, and it's changed for the better, and it's going in a direction that I think it will never be from again. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to have been a part of that, and I'm glad to God let me live long enough to, to be here to talk about it.